Michael, what do you tell your patients when they ask what causes Parkinson's? Well, there's a few elements to that question. There's why does it happen, which in the vast majority of cases, we don't know. Uh, but then there's the secondary question of what's happening in the brain mm -hmm. that leads to these symptoms of Parkinson's. What's, what's causing this to happen? And even within that, there's a lot we still are learning about. But fundamentally, there is um, a loss of the cells in the brain that produce a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine is involved in the fluidity of movement. Uh, it's also involved in mood. And so when you lose these dopamine producing cells, these sort of factories in your brain that make the dopamine, mm -hmm. a lot of these what we call cardinal motor symptoms, the, the tremor, the rigidity, uh, develop. What leads to that loss is still, in the vast majority of cases, not understood. We do know that there is something called the Lewy body, which is a mm -hmm. sort of plaque in the brain that forms both in this area where the dopamine is made and then ultimately in other areas of the mm -hmm. brain. So what triggers that loss is something we can talk about mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in subsequent questions looking at different subtypes perhaps of Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a loss of dopamine, not exclusively but primarily, uh, that leads to a lot of the symptoms that bring patients to us. Are there specific regions in the brain that, uh, this, uh, that you see this loss of dopamine? Right, so there are within, there is within the brain an area called the substantia ni nigra, which means the black substance, partially because the dopaminergic neurons mm -hmm. have a sort of blackish quality. Right. And you see that, that their loss, if you look at the brain of somebody who has passed away and who had Parkinson's, you can see that that sort of area of the brain did not produce as much dopamine mm -hmm. uh, as, as a, say, an, a non-Parkinson patient. And so those areas are, are largely uh, what's affected in Parkinson's. But because the brain is like a circuit, the loss of one area affects um, multiple areas of the brain. Now, do, that loss, is does it continue to progress or does it happen and then a patient, is their symptoms are like that all the time? Right. Uh, so Parkinson's is slowly progressive. What we think is by the time you've come to the doctor's office with your symptoms, you've probably lost a large amount of your dopamine producing uh, neurons, maybe 70% even. Uh, so you've got a reserve, but when mm -hmm. that reserve ultimately gets lower and lower, these symptoms begin to emerge. And, and they do continue to progress over time as the dopamine is lost, as other parts of the brain get affected. Mm -hmm. And it's important to say it's not really solely a disorder of dopamine loss, but it is sort of the sine qua non, the main mm -hmm. finding in the Parkinson's brain that, that uh, differentiates it. Are there other neuro neurotransmitters or neurochemicals that are uh, affected uh, in there Parkinson's? Are, there are. There are. Uh, some of it is lost, some of it is imbalanced, and we know that mm -hmm. other neurotransmitters things like acetylcholine, serotonin, mm -hmm. are also not normal. And so that speaks to some extent to the broader issues that we face with our Parkinson patients, which go beyond just slowness and can involve aspects of sleep disorder, mood disorder, other mm -hmm. things that are what we call these non-motor symptoms. 